Greetings from Alabama. We mostly survived our move from Utah a little over a month ago and I've gotten unpacked so today I'm taking a little playtime and I'm going to do a follow-up post to last month's post on how to do uh, Amazon Echo integration with the SmartThings Hub. Um, Yuri had asked for a simple how-to tutorial on doing that so we're going to do that. We're going to add an uh, appliance module to the SmartThings Hub and then connect it to Echo so you can do voice control of it. First, I, I got to uh, do a little tour of this amazing new house we um, moved into. It starts with this backyard that's just got these wonderful big rocks in it. And then there's a little tree house up there in the woods and a little creek that's got water that will flow through it when it rains. This house was built in the 70s by a pipe organ enthusiast. So he basically designed this house to house a pipe organ he had bought in that was massive. It had uh, floor to ceiling pipes here, another set of pipes here, and here were pipes even clear down at this end of the house in the kitchen. Had um, four consoles, um, 68 ranks, and I don't know how many pipes. Uh, but it was just amazing. Recently, a uh, IBM coworker discovered a website by this guy. He, it turns out, after he moved from this house, he took the pipe organ with him and built a new house in uh, near Cleveland on Lake Erie. And that house has not one but two pipe organs. It's about three times the size of this house. It's amazing. You uh, can look at it on the web. Uh, he's got a website for it. Search for Blackstone Organ or uh, look at the link in the blog post below. But the design of that house and this house are great acoustically for music or voice control. It's because of the ballista uh, type architecture where they got the tall open ceilings where the angle doesn't bounce off the floor so there's no echo. I can see the Amazon echo that over there. I can basically control that from anywhere in the house, even on the deck. I'll show you. Alexa, turn on the fountain. Okay. You can see her over there and just turns it on. So pretty much I can, from anywhere in the house, control. Alexa, turn the fountain off. Okay. So it's perfect for this voice control stuff. Uh, so on to the how-to. So Z-Wave devices, you can buy a variety of them um, for controlling things for anywhere from $30 to $40. Uh, they have outdoor modules, um, they have modules you can replace outlets with or switches with or you can screw into light bulbs. Um, the SmartThings hub is right over there, it's hardwired into your ethernet and the Echo we showed you last month is a Wi-Fi device. So there are apps for um, Apple and Android and the Echo has a web app as well. Today we're going to be showing you the Android app and we'll do a screencast of that. Um, showing the steps on how to add um, that Z-Wave device and then how to link it up to the, smart, um, the Echo. We're going to start by adding our new Z-Wave module to the SmartThings app. Now one non-obvious trick here is that if you're bringing a Z-Wave module from an existing hub or network you first have to exclude it. Now, all Z-Wave hubs will have a utility for doing this the one SmartThings has is pretty well buried. First you have to go to the locations menu and then to the gear icon for settings and then you got to pick your hub and here you'll find the Z-Wave utilities. So it's this general exclusion utility you want. Once you have that started you just go to your module, plug it in the wall anywhere in the house and click the button, uh, the local button on the module. Now it doesn't hurt to do this even if it's a new module that does not need excluding or doesn't hurt to do it more than once. Um, if you're having troubles adding a module, you might first try excluding it uh, just to make sure that it's uh, not part of any existing network. Uh, now adding modules is much uh, simpler. You go back to your main page here and you use this icon in the lower right, um, the marketplace icon, and you can uh, uh, pick, pick the specific device, uh, but most of the times you can get away with just simply clicking add new device. Then again, you push the button on your module, uh, either on or off, and it should detect that and 
um, then all you got to do is name it. We're going to use this module on a fun projection light that we're going to project on that wall where the pipe organ pipes used to be. Um, this simulates uh, reflection off of water, so we're going to call it uh, <laughs> winter. That's uh, that would be silly. Uh, we're going to call it water lights. And um, it's in the living room. Uh, optionally, you can then add a smart app to it, um, like the smart light smart app, if you want to automate the control of the light, like turning it on based on sunset time of day or activity. But in our case, we're just going to leave it as a manual control. Um, now you can go back um, to your living room tab, and here you'll see this device, and we can now control it. Um, now what we really want to do is link it up to the Amazon Echo, and that will require a SmartThings Smart App, but we don't add it from here. We more easily add it from the Amazon app. Um, from there, here, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to do. Basically, you go, um, you're on your main menu here, and you go to the settings menu, and you pick this connected home option. And there are currently three hubs supported. The first that came along was Wink, then SmartThings, and then most recently Insteon. Um, and you just say link with SmartThings. And if this is the first time through, it'll prompt you for your SmartThings password and user ID. Um, since I've done this before, um, I didn't have to enter that. And you just pick the devices that you want to authorize, which just typically be all of them. And uh, and you're pretty much done. The last thing you got to do is uh, tell Alexa to uh, discover what devices are on that network. And you can either push this button here or you can say, mm. Alexa, discover devices. Starting discovery. If you have a Philips Zoom bridge, and it takes about 20 seconds. Um, and it'll come back and tell you how many devices it had found. Then you can say, um, give it a voice command to turn that device on or off, either you say device on or device off or turn device on or turn off device. Any of those combinations will work. Um, Discovery is complete. So I for found example, six connected home devices. If your Philips bulbs were not as soon as she stops jabbering, we'll bridge, tell her to turn the water lights on. Discovery. Alexa, turn on the water lights. Okay. Or something more simple. Water light, Alexa, water lights off. Sorry, I couldn't find a device or group name <laughs> watching lights in Bruce's profile. Let's try that again. Alexa, water lights off. Okay. Um, now when it gets dark out here, I'll, I'll turn uh, back to the camera and we'll show you what those lights look like. It's pretty fun. Last thing you want to do is um, create groups. Um, for example, all lights. Uh, that way you can control a whole bunch of things all at once rather than uh, individually. And then once that's done, you can say, Alexa, turn all lights on. Okay. Oh, Alexa, all lights off. Okay. And that's it. So we'll be back as soon as the sun sets and I'll, I'll show you those water lights. Okay, it's getting a little bit darker, so I'm going to turn on some fun lights. There are fountain lights there. And we have in here a couple of spotlights that shine on a chandelier and a nice piece of glass. We have a couple of $10 IKEA lights that light up some plants, cast some fun shadows on the ceiling. The funnest one is up there, that's the water projector light. Alexa, turn the water lights on. And projects over here. A nice big circle that fits that pipe organ wall well. Just multicolored and um, kind of looks like water reflections. Let me show you that light real quick. If you search for each to a water light, you can probably find it on the internet. Uh, so it's just a. Uh, unless there's some Christmas decorations out there, a lot cheaper, but not quite as bright as that one. So that's it for this week, um, this month. See you next month. I have a whole house power monitor from Nereo that got an order, and it'll be fun to show you that hopefully in a month or so.